and welcome to a VirginiaPreps.com Zoomcast here on this sunny, hot July Sunday. I am publisher Matthew Hatfield, and we're joined by a special guest. He's one of the top high school football players in the Tidewater area and the state of Virginia from the class of 2021. He earned first team all Peninsula District honors at both wide receiver and defensive back a season ago. Second team all state on both sides of the ball over a 3.0 GPA, 36 catches for 710 yards, eight touchdowns on offense, six intercepts, 22 pass breakups, 42 tackles on defense. And he helped the Raiders, or as I like to call them the Waskily Warwick Waiters to their first playoff win in 29 years when they beat Hampton on a frigid day, which we'll talk about uh, last year. And uh, we're joined now by the newest JMU Duke commit, Messiah Russell here. Messiah, congrats on the commitment. How's life treating you? Thank you. Um, everything is going good right now. You know, it feels good to be finally committed to JMU. You know, uh, it's a great school and I'm just ready for it. That's great. And we'll dig into that. Now, isn't it? It's remarkable. I remember all those stats off the top of my head. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> The nice thing about technology and uh, looking up, and you, of course, you have a great highlight tape, which a lot of that's uh, attached to it. People can see some of those plays in there when they pull up your huddle and they just Google search Messiah Russell from work. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's talk about your recruitment because you not only had a lot of good options in state with JMU, I know William and Mary was in the picture, but you had a lot of the Patriot League, Ivy type of schools in the mix. So your academics had to be good. So first off, tell me about the grades. Uh, what you did GPA, SAT-wise, um, what you want to major in there at JMU, and who else was in the picture? Um, grades have always been a really important thing for me. You know, my family is really, you know, school-based. My sister, she's been a good role model for me to always keep my grades on point. She went to UVA as a um, chemical engineer, so she always makes sure that I'm straight in everything I do. Um, you know, these schools that have reached out to me, you know, you know, it was always my goal to try to make sure, like, my GPA was, you know, good before anything else because, you know, football is not going to always be there. So I just wanted to make sure I kept my GPA as good as it possible. And um, I took my SAT in, I think, October. I got a 1060 on it. You know, it was kind of low for me, but uh, I was going to take it again. But um, now since, you know, the coronavirus, I haven't been able to really, you know, get back to it at all. Sure. Now, you know what you're going to study there in uh, JMU? Um, I don't know the exact um, field, but I want, I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Oh, okay. Nice. You can definitely use more of them in the world because you make a difference beyond the sport of football. And you mentioned your sister. Correct me if I'm wrong. I read this uh, on our site and one of our guests on our radio show on ESPN 94.1. He's been on quite a few times. Greg Medea, good friend uh, with the JMU site, Daily News Record. I believe he highlighted that your sister is married to one Demetrius Nicholson. So that's your brother-in-law? Yes, that is. Former Bayside grad. I covered him, so I now I feel old. I'm covering people that their sons have played and so forth, and mm -hmm. nephews, brothers, cousins, all those things. So I know how I know how the old heads are talking about when they say that now. But um, <laughs> what what advice has he given you? Because he was one of the best defensive backs in our city, as I'm sure you've heard from him and others being Gatorade State player. He went on to become uh, a great one at UVA as well. Had a chance to play in the NFL, and now he's coaching. But um, I'm sure he critiques you and gives you advice on technique and things of that nature. Yeah, he definitely, you know, helps me with everything. He's been a big help through the recruitment process, you know. Our process has definitely been a little bit different just due to the coronavirus and, you know, unfortunate circumstances have changed a little bit. But his main thing was just, you know, take my time just to make sure that I'm going to a school that I know I want to go to. Um, <clears throat> try to make sure that you're building really good relationships with the coaches and just even once you feel like you've reached your top point, just make sure you're always just pushing to do better and better yourself. And we always go, whenever I'm um, with him, we always go to the field and he'll help me. You know, he'll go, he'll take me through some college workouts, if you want to say that, and just help me get my own um, skills right. Sure. And also, <laughs> the savviest young men I've come across in terms of interviews and um, great guys. I'm sure you've come across with your sister being married to him. But you can take him now, I imagine, in a, in a 40 yard pitch, though, right? You got a little more in, in the tank speed wise. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. One second. No, you're fine. Um, I'm with Messiah Russell here from Warwick High School, Newport News, standout, all region, first team, offense, defense. And he also was a second team all state selection. Uh, I said we know about how savvy uh, Trey is, and um, great young man. I've had a chance to cover an interview over the years, but you you still can take him though. Right now, he's got you got a little more left in the tank than he does right now on a forty yard dash, right? Uh, 
it would be a good race, but I think I might, I think I might be able to do something. Okay. Modest and humble. I gotcha. Tell me more about JMU because um, the Dukes have cleaned up in recruiting here lately across the state. They've gotten some guys from uh, Northside, Potomac Falls, various areas beyond the 757, but they've also gotten some players here from Hampton Rose. Kind of give me the vibe with the coaching staff and the school and then going to a place where they're competing for a national championship on a pretty regular basis. That had to appeal to you, I imagine. It definitely did. You know, they have an amazing coaching staff. You know, Coach Whitley and Coach Merritt are the coaches that I talk to the most. You know, um, Coach Whitley has talked to me a lot about um, where I could fit into their school just with their um, five, you know, defensive back system. He thinks I can, you know, cover the field and play, you know, all five. But they're looking at me mostly as safety. And <clears throat> with them um, being able to, you know, be contenders in their league and national titles and championships and all that, I think that really had a big part of, like, why I committed there. Just, you know, that combined with how great their coaching staff is and the great relationship that we built. Now they're talking about you playing safety, I believe? Yes. And there's certainly a need with that. Um, with Wayne Davis, the Lake Taylor, great former Ohio State Buckeye, he was also, like Trey, a Gatorade Player of the Year in our state, uh, graduating after this coming season, a couple other safeties from Fredericksburg moving on. Did the opportunity for early playing time, if you continue to excel and progress here, uh, learning the schemes, did that also play a factor in your, in your decision here? Yes. Yeah, so when I was talking to Coach um, Kurt, he's definitely said that they're looking for immediate safety help once I, you know, get there in 2021. So that was also, you know, another big thing to just get in and play and make an impact as soon as possible. I mentioned some of the numbers. Um, your ball skills are evident from last season watching in that playoff game, which I want to hit on with you in a bit against Hampton uh, with a couple of takeaways. You made plays at wide receiver, and you guys had a very good year, one of the best in Warwick history. Yeah. Growing up and kind of developing a football <laughs> player, did you have more of a desire to play offense, defense, didn't matter? I mean, I'm sure you'll probably give me the, uh, didn't matter, but kind of give me where your mindset has been and where it is now. Um, growing up, I always wanted to, you know, be a running back just, you know, from Little League because, you know, they always had the ball in their hand and were making the big plays. But as I grew up, I think my game started to mature a bit more and I started transitioning to more of a cornerback receiver, um, you know, position. And my dad also wanted me to play defensive back a lot. So I kind of just stepped back and, you know, listened a little bit. And then, you know, once I got in high school, I just wanted to go wherever I could help out. Uh as you look at your abilities on the field, what kind of sets you apart from other wide receiver, defensive back safeties? What kind of is your niche, and how would you kind of break down your game to others that are going to watch it this year and beyond? I think at defensive back, the thing that um, helps me a lot is my height and my length. I'm able to cover a lot of ground with my strides, you know, long strides. Um, I have speed to close in on um, receivers that are coming my way, and I can drop back in the zone, and, you know, Especially from playing receiver, I think my ball skills are pretty good. So I think that helps out a lot. And on um, receiver, I think just knowing where to find, you know, the holes on the field to try to get open and, you know, have good connections with my quarterback to try to, you know, make sure we're always hitting the right point. Mm -hmm. Who do you like to study, be it at the collegiate level or the pro? What uh, <laughs> NFL players, college players do you like to emulate and kind of take bits and parts of their games and uh, put into your own? A defensive back or receiver? Either one. Um, at defensive back, I like to study Derek Stingley. Uh, he's new at LSU, but mm -hmm. last year I really like saw myself watching his game a lot. Just you know, him playing as a true freshman at LSU was like a big accomplishment. So he obviously knows what he's doing in the way that he you know can flip his hips and play on the man, and also his ball skills are amazing. So I like to watch him a lot. Oh, yeah, you got a chance to be uh, one of those next pros from LSU that are like Tyron, Matthew, Honey Badger, Patrick Peterson, and others here. Um, in terms of improving your game, is, is the next thing for you and your growth, be it at high school with Warwick and even in college at JMU, is it just getting better at run support, those type of things? What are you looking at to get, uh, get better at? I'm looking to get better at everything. I like, you know, I can always get better at dropping back into my zone, playing man, you know, when I'm on the line, get physical with the receiver and just everything. Uh, tell me about that frigid Saturday against Hampton. Man, that was cold. I was glad I was in the press box where I generally am. I didn't spend much time on the field for pregame photos. I've already gotten plenty of you guys from work at a couple of games I was at with Hampton the first time in Woodside on a Thursday night at uh, Todd Stadium in Newport News. But, man, that was something else. You guys got into a little bit of a deficit early but had a great comeback win, and it had to be a special moment for you. Uh, it definitely was. It was definitely one of the coldest games I've ever played in, for sure. Um, 
just coming out into the game, we knew it was going to be a tough game because we played Hampton already, and it was they beat us by, I believe, a touchdown. I think it was touching our three points. But we already knew it was going to be a tough game. But we think that as the season went by, we definitely got better. You know, they did too. But we think that we, you know, were able to get something over on them just starting out the game. Um, we weren't exactly, you know, hitting everything on key. And then as the game started to develop, we started to lock down on defense. And um, I was able to make a good catch that, you know, helped us win. And I think that had a lot to do with my quarterback. He definitely put the ball in the right spot. Definitely couldn't have done that without him. And um, he definitely took over himself to help us win that game. It was uh, Derek Nixon. Was that who it was, I believe? Derek, yeah. Yes. I, think I remember talking to Derek Nixon and Bryce Buchanan, thinking my toes were going to freeze off after the game, as well as your coach, Corey Harrison, who I'll chat about with in a second. So what was your best play? Was it the fumble recovery? Was it the pick or was it the catch? What was your What was the play that you think uh, set the tone there? Um, I definitely think. I definitely think my best play would be the touchdown just because that, you know, let us get more points to, you know, beat them. But I think what sealed it off was definitely the pick for me. Okay. We continue along here with the Warwick High School standout from Newport News, Messiah Russell. He's committed to James Madison University to play his college football. We'll do some rapid fire with him to finish up in just a little bit. Um, you guys had confidence, too, because you played mm -hmm. them, like you mentioned, season I was there, and you almost came back to beat them. You were very close. They had a couple of – um, miraculous plays and credit to them on third down that helped them in that second half as you guys were going back and forth in that battle. But then the next game, you know, I thought it was interesting and kind of a, a signal to, I think, the players like yourself that are coming back and Coach Harrison, what he's building is, you know, you're playing Lake Taylor next. They want to win a state championship. We know how good they are with some great talent. And Malik Newton is one of the best running backs in the country committed to Pittsburgh. And a lot of people said, all right, Warwick got its win. They're, they're going to be done now. And you lost 21-14, to 14, but you played them very close. Tell me about that game, what you guys did well, what you didn't, and what you learned from it that you can use going forward. I think that game was definitely a great representation of what Warwick can be and how good of a team we were last year, even though we lost. Um, we definitely came into the game with a chip on our shoulder from the loss earlier in that season. Nobody liked that loss. So when we came out, we wanted to make sure that we, you know, hit it hard. So coming out, um, they definitely, you know, got the one up on us. They had a block punt, and they scored on that. Then the interception that they scored on also. But we were able to, you know, come back. I, I got a touchdown, and I was called back, which was unfortunate. But then Derek Nixon also, you know, helped us to come back with another touchdown. But I definitely think that was a game where we showed our true, like we did definitely display what we could really be as a team. Yeah, you guys might have pushed them as well as just about anybody in the postseason, and that was, I think, a big sign of improvement considering they beat you pretty good 45-12 back in early September. Mm -hmm. um, give me your thoughts on where we are right now. I mean, uh, on paper, Coach Harrison, uh, you guys got to feel pretty good about the squad you got, but I know the VHSL is going to meet this coming week about where things are, and uh, it's very uncertain right now about the state of football, both at the high school and the college level. Kind of give me what you guys as, as players are talking about and the coaches are telling to you too. Um, we're just trying to keep it optimistic and just, you know, think the best that we're going to have a season and just make sure that, you know, when the season comes, that we'll be prepared. Everybody's, you know, working on their craft on their own. We're trying to get together as much as we can, just the players by ourselves, you know, in small groups, you know, the quarterback and receivers will get together every now and then just to make sure that we are not losing our connection. Some of the defensive players will get together just to run drills and stuff like that. And Coach Harrison, he's pushing for us to go, you know, be better on our own is go to the gym, make sure we're lifting, stay hydrated, be healthy. I know this is a tough one to try to answer, but have you even given thought of if the VHSL was to pull the plug and say, hey, we're not even going to go to the spring and you guys not have a season, mm -hmm. how heartbreaking that would be and how you would as a, as a football player who's looking forward to a senior season very much, and rightfully so, so many kids out there all across our state and the country when it comes to high school football, how you would cope with it? Um, I honestly don't. I try not to think about it too much. Um, I try to stay as optimistic as I can, but it would definitely be, you know, heartbreaking to not have my senior season. It's, you know, something everybody dreams about that play football since they were a kid. So not to not have that season, it'd definitely be hard. But I honestly can't say how I would cope with it until I'm in that situation. Sure. Uh, one more here before we go to uh, rapid fire with you, Masai, and it's been a real joy talking with you here. Um, give me what you would uh, tell JMU Nation out there, all the Dukes. There's a bunch of alums, including my father being one, from the class of 77 and Hampton Roads and all beyond, and 
those in Harrisonburg that pick us up all across the state, what you would tell them about Messiah Russell being the football player and a student athlete that they're going to be getting come next year. And uh, the plans is I know you want to get a national championship to them. Um, just know I'm a hardworking player that's ready to come in and contribute in every way that he can. Uh, I just, you know, with me and all the other commits that we have coming into the 2021 year, I think we're definitely going to put on the show and definitely going to have that title. Yeah, I'm sure you're, you're not done, at JMU, bringing some 757 guys. I'm sure there's a couple guys that might be teammates or I should say even Peninsula District opponents that you would like to have join with you there in Harrisonburg. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, it's a, it's a couple guys I want to come, but, you know, we'll just see what happens with that. You, you can give names if you like. Nobody's going to care. It's all right. You're not breaking any rules. Any names you want to give out there? I'll keep it on the low. <laughs> all right, keep it on the low. All right, you ready to play some rapid fire with us? Let's go. The sharp yet soft-spoken Messiah Russell from Warwick High School in Newport News. He's committed to play his college football at JMU. All right, I want to know right off the bat, right off the jump, who does the best Coach Hairston impersonation on the football team? Israel Wellens. Israel Wellens. Does he do the – I was. I love this last year on the signs. One of my favorite moments taking photos. I'm usually in the box doing stats and so forth. Was when you guys get a first down and he does the – is it the move the chains thing he does? It gets me so, yeah. it gets me so fired up and brings a smile to my face. I'm sure you're looking forward to that this year, getting a lot of those move the chains, right? Yeah, he's definitely the biggest impersonator on our team. He'll, he'll give you a good impression of anybody. All right. All right. Good deal. Um, Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. All right. Favorite show on Netflix? Money Heist. Money Heist. Okay. Sport Messiah Russell enjoys most besides football is? Basketball. Basketball. All right. If you could trade places with one basketball player, who would it be? In high school or college or NBA? Any level. LeBron. If you could trade places with one football player, high school, college, pro, who would it be? Derek Singley. Oh, okay. You get that money soon, right? Gets that straight cash. Uh, a couple more for you. Trapped on a desert island, Messiah Russell can have one item. What's the item? Water. Water. I I'm with you on that. People say cell phone <laughs> or this. I, I need water to stay alive mm. and survive here. If you could visit one place in the world, where would you go? Barbados. Barbados. All right. If you, and lastly, if you could get one person to do a TikTok, it can be a family member, a coach, somebody you don't know, who would you most want to see? You know what TikTok is, right? I'm sure. I do. Who would like you want to see? It could be anybody. Celebrity, someone Beyonce. you know, don't know. You said who? Beyonce. Beyonce to do a TikTok. All right, there you have it. That is the uh, talented young man from Warwick High School in Newport News, Messiah Russell. He's committed to play his college football at James Madison University. We wish you all the best there, and we're hoping to see you coming up this season on Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights in the Peninsula District with the Raiders as you guys try to build on last season's success. So thank you so much, and you stay safe out there, all right? Thank you for having me, too. All right, thank you so much.